honestly never thought that I'd be making Google Site tutorial videos on YouTube, but since people seem to like them and find them valuable, I figure why not make more to help you all out a little bit more and to make better websites. Something I've been really liking lately is that when people make a website using my tutorials, they sometimes send me the link to that website so I can take a look at it. And I really find that valuable just to see what people are coming up with how they're being creative. But the other day, someone sent me a link to their website that has some features in it that I hadn't thought about before. I think they're a really unique take on Google Sites, really valuable kind of hidden features. And I just wanted to tell you about them today so you can maybe use them and integrate them into your sites. So if we take a look at the site that was sent to me, you can see it's from William in Uganda. And I just liked a few different things inside of it that I think stood out. First of all, I think the circular logo works really well. I like that over here under YouTube, if you just click on YouTube, it directly takes you to his YouTube channel, which is super cool. I didn't know you could do that before, but I figured out how to do it. It's a little bit of a hidden trick, more or less. And then if you go over to his contact page, something that I thought was really creative was that if you just click on the mail icon, it brings up a pop-up that creates an email directed to this person, and you can just start typing immediately, which is a much better way to contact people than through Google Forms, which I thought was pretty clunky in the past, and I'm glad I found an alternative to it now. Let's start just talking about the logo in favicon on your site. So if you look at other sites like YouTube, Netflix, Amazon, anything like that, you can see that they have these little custom icons that are usually their logo for their company in the corner of their site, just called a favicon. And this basically just reiterates where you are. And the same goes for the logo on your homepage. As you can see right here, it just stands out, shows maybe a little picture of you, whatever you want it to be, but it just helps to show where the person viewing your site is. And it gives them a good idea of that. So the logo by default, if you just enter any image, it's going to come out square like a normal image. But the really cool thing that William's site showed and reminded me of is that you can actually upload PNGs to the site. So basically your image can have any transparent background and as long as it's transparent, that logo is gonna come through and be on its own. So you can have a circle, a triangle, whatever shape logo you want and you can keep that background transparent to make it look a lot more professional. Now if you have a logo for your company, you can do this super easily just by uploading that logo. But if you have a more particular image you wanna put into it, you kinda of have to do some Photoshopping. Or for me, I use Pixelmator. So just coming in here and I added this circle here, I just added myself, masked myself out with it, so I had this nice background here. And as you can see, the background's transparent because it has these checkers. So as you can see, we can turn on and off that layer, on and off this one. And if I export this as a PNG file, meaning that it has a transparent background when it's saved, you can upload that to Google Sites and the image is gonna look a lot better. So let me very quickly show you how you do that. If you hover over the logo, you can click Edit Logo. You can go to brand images and you can see that it has the option for a logo and the favicon. So I just have them set to the same. I think keeping those two consistent definitely reiterates what your company is about and who you are. So if we just delete that logo right now and upload a new one, I'm gonna show you two examples. The first one is not a PNG, so it doesn't have a transparent background. If we click open on that, you're not really gonna notice that much of a difference here because the background is white, but if you uploaded that as your favicon, it would have a white square border around it. Kind of like Williams here, he has that white square around his image, but if you just made that a PNG, it would have been a clear background, which would look really cool, just that circular shape. So now let me delete the logo and click upload again. This time I'm gonna click the PNG version and you can see it's a transparent background here. So if we click open, you can't tell a difference here, but if you actually have it in the favicon area, you're gonna notice there's no square around it. So I know that's a pretty minor thing, but you'd be surprised how much of a difference that makes just to set you apart from normal square boring icons and just making it a little bit more fun into whatever shape you want. And this will always work as long as you just remember to export in a PNG and you have those checkers behind your image you're editing. Okay, so the next kind of hidden feature I'm gonna be showing you is how to create a page that links directly to an external website. And at first, when I saw this on William's website, I could not figure out how to do it inside of Google Sites, but it was extremely easy and I was just missing the key to do it. So let me just show you really quickly, maybe I just missed this in the past and everyone else knows about it, but I don't know, I, it's kind of crazy that I missed it. So in our Google Site Builder, if we go over to Pages, you can see all of our regular pages. And down at the bottom is the option to create a new page, just a little plus right here. So if you hover over the plus, I've just always clicked New Page. I never actually saw the option just to go up and create a new link. So if you just click New Link, what this allows you to do is create basically just another page 
that will go in here, but instead of just going to a page inside the site, it's basically just a link that takes you to another site. So for example, let's just go to my YouTube channel. I'm just gonna copy the link right here, copied. I'm gonna go back to my Google site and paste that in the link spot. So now that's in the link spot, you have the option to open in a new tab. That's what we want instead of just opening in the tab you're in. And then you can name it whatever you want. For example, I'm just gonna say YouTube 2 because I already have a YouTube page, so just click done. It's gonna add it. So now as you can see, you have this new page right here, which is basically just a button. So if you click it, it redirects you to a website, which is super cool. You can use that in any different way to your YouTube channel, to social media, whatever you might wanna use it to. And it's a really cool, easy way to integrate other websites into Google Sites. So again, just to reiterate, go to pages, go to the bottom, hover on the plus and click new link right above it and you're good to go. Next, I wanna talk about that really cool email redirect options. So now as you can see in my contact page, I don't really have much information. I just have what I do, where I live and just send me a question. I just have this little email icon right here. There's no Google form like I had in the past because when I got questions on that Google forum, it was kind of a pain to respond to them and open them and read them. But now I just have an option that people can just email me directly and it'll be a lot easier to communicate with people that have questions. So what I'm gonna show you here is a ridiculously easy trick that everyone should do and yeah, let's jump into it. Okay, so first we need this icon. All I'm gonna do is go to Google Images. I'm just gonna search for email icon, something like that, spell it wrong of course. Go to images and I'm gonna make sure to write PNG after it, just like we were talking about before. We want a transparent background here so there's no square around our icon. We want it to be transparent. So you just find one you like. For examples like this, I like to have a white one because I like to keep my background black like I've discussed in videos before. But as you can see, it has a black background, a white cutout, and then it has that checkers in the background. So let's just right click on this, save the image, and we're good to go. Now back inside of Google Sites, we just need to load this image. So I'm just gonna go to insert, images, upload, and I'm gonna find it in my downloads. So just find it in your downloads, open that image up, and it's just gonna load it huge. Of course, we're gonna shrink it down smaller later, but it just always loads really big. So I might as well just shrink that down right now. It's a little bit finicky. People have been leaving me comments on how hard it is to actually shrink things inside of Google Sites. and. I know it's not ideal, but we don't need it to be perfect. Okay, and I know this looks horrible, but I'm just gonna leave the icon right here. It's gonna make it a lot easier. So basically, all we need to do now is link this icon to mail to us. So all you have to do is click the insert link button right here. All you're gonna type is mail to, put a colon, and then enter your email address. So for me, it's kesslertava at gmail.com. Just apply that and you're good to go from there. It's really amazing how well this works. The mail to and the colon followed by your email address is really cool. All you have to do is just click on the icon and it immediately redirects you to your email server, whether you're on an iPhone, on a computer, whatever you're on, it just redirects you, loads up an email that's ready to go with your address already automatically entered into it. As you can see, if I just click this link right here, it just brings a pop-up, ready to go to me. You can just enter your subject, enter your email, and yeah, you're good to go. And then for my particular website, just to keep that black and white theme that I have, I've added some more text boxes underneath here that look pretty weird having all these little text edit bits, but once you publish it, those disappear and it just turns into a nice black section underneath so it doesn't cut off too soon and leave white space underneath. And if this little icon isn't clear enough for some people using your site, you can always put an arrow to it or just say, click on this, whatever it might be, and it should be pretty simple and it works amazingly well. Lastly, I wanna talk about something that isn't super exciting, but it's a little bit hidden and it's very useful in a lot of different situations when you're building a site, and that is text spacing. So as you can see, when you have a lot of text on a page like this where I'm writing about me, I don't really love how spaced out it is. It might work fine, but let's say I wanna make it a little bit more tight together. There's no clear option when you click on the text on how to do that. But of course, you just click these little three dots on the far side, the more, which is kind of hidden, and then you click on the line spacing button right here, and then you can select it to whatever you want, like in a normal document. So let's say instead of single spaced, I want it to be a custom spacing, I can just change it to like 0.5 of a space, click apply, and it's gonna push it much tighter together, which can just really vary based on what style you're going for. Again, that's just a little bit of a hidden thing that's tucked away. There's also some other things in here like strike through, clear formatting, and increasing and decreasing indents. So not a huge feature, but something that's just nice to know and is a bit hidden like all of these features that I talked about today. 
But that's basically it for today. Thank you, William, for sharing your website with me so I could take a look at what you made and share some of these great features that you came up with. And I think a lot of people will take value out of them. So thanks a lot for that. And thank you as always for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe down below and I'll see you all next time.